Fisio. John Gear. John Gear. We also have our chair, our guest present. So forgive me, our agent. I'm the chairperson. Um, first up on our agenda tonight, we have an appointment with Director of Community Planning and Economic Development, Paul Halkiotis, uh, also joined by Director of Human Resources, Molly Keene. Uh, and it looks like Paul's going to bring to us a status update on the St. Street lot uh, and conservation restriction, as well as environmental planner position. Um, Paul, if you'd like to unmute and take it from there, love to hear from you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening and happy Earth Day. I want to thank you all for uh, making the effort to uh, um, change how the Conservation Commission has been doing business for the last uh, 60 years or so um, by, by um, making the effort to have a virtual meeting and continue moving uh, uh, things through the, the Conservation Commission process. Um, there are a couple of things that I, I want to brief you on, and then we're going to talk about the environmental planner position. Uh, we have made uh, great progress working with town council and the seller of the property located at the end of the St. Streets that um, town meeting authorized uh, us to purchase last fall. Um, most recently, I've been working on the conservation restriction, which is a requirement for any properties that are purchased using community preservation funds. Conservation restriction is a long, detailed legal document, which simply stated, clearly states what activities are allowed on the property and what activities are not allowed on the property. Conservation restriction is required to be um, reviewed and approved by the State Department of Conservation Services. And uh, a draft conservation restriction has been sent to the state for uh, them to begin the review process. It can take up to three months. Um, the draft conservation restriction was provided to me by um, uh, my contact at the Wildlands Trust. The Wildlands Trust will be the holder of the conservation restriction and that means they'll be enforcing it off into the future. This property, is the, uh, the title for the property is gonna be um, held by the Board of Selectmen. It's not gonna be owned by the Conservation Commission, but the conservation restriction will ensure that the land can only be used for a waterfront park in perpetuity and will restrict to any, any future development or any activities on that property uh, unless they're specifically spelled out and allowed for in the conservation restriction. The conservation restriction needs to be voted on and approved by the Conservation Commission. And um, now that we've got it in, in a draft form that we've sent it off to the state, I'm going to send it along to, uh, to Al and Ramonda and they will provide it to you and we'll get it on the agenda at a future meeting uh, to have the commission vote on it. But I'd like to make sure that before we give it to you folks, that um, the state says it's in proper form. I don't want to have, you have to, it's like 34 pages long. I don't want to have to give it to you and ask you to read it and then come back and look at, at um, minor amendments that were made later. So I would say within the next um, month or two, we should have that in final form and we'll get back with the commission and go over the conservation restriction. And at that meeting, we can also bring in um, Scott McFadden from the Wildlands Trust, who is our contact person. Um, they were, the Wildlands Trust was scheduled to do a site walk on the property back on March 18th, but that was right in the time frame um, when the COVID virus um, was starting to heat up and uh, they canceled that. So uh, the board of directors of the Wildlands Trust still has to do a site visit and um, we will continue to work on getting the conservation restriction finalized. It's been reviewed and uh, approved by Dave DeLuca Town Council. So we are also um, working closely with David on the closing. Everything is now in place and um, all the details have been ironed out and all we need to do at this point is schedule the closing I talked to David about how that actually happens in this virtual world we're living in now. And he says that it all happens online. Um, the deed has been um, um, sent back over to the seller. The seller has been asked to um, sign the deed and send it to town council. Then um, it'll get signed on, uh, on our end, I guess, and it will go to um, 
be recorded at the uh, county registry of deeds. And that should take place within the next um, two to three weeks. At this point, it's good to go. So um, I will be um, pleased to report this will be our first uh, land purchase using com community preservation funds. And I look forward to getting back to you and reporting the good news and finalizing the, uh, the conservation restriction. Before I move on, are there any questions about that? Cheryl, go ahead. I'm just curious why, um, if the selectmen are holding the deed to the land, wouldn't they sign off on the conservation restriction and not the conservation themselves? Actually, the selectmen and the conservation commission are required to sign it. I actually just want to take a moment to mention that uh, Joe Demiria, I can't see your video. So if you were to be indicating you'd like to speak, I would not know. The next um, so the next subject that I wanted to just briefly mention, and, and I don't know whether Al was on this call today, um, but there was a meeping, MEPA scoping session held this, this morning for uh, the Mill Pond Dam Renew Removal Project. Um, there were uh, um, representatives from the Watershed Association, from um, DEP, and from uh, the MEPA unit, along with the project engineers that participated in one of these virtual meetings, and um, it all seemed to go fairly smoothly. Um, so it was, uh, it's now within the, the comment period. And I plan on sending some comments to uh, to MEPA in support of the project. This is Al Getz. Go ahead, Al. Yeah, I, I can also not see your video, Al, so I will not be able to tell if you're trying to indicate you'd like to speak. I would like to speak. Please do. I would like to speak. Let's hear, let's hear from you, Al. Please do. Okay. Uh, I talked to Chris Hirsch this morning, and I couldn't get by the phone connection that he gave me uh, into that, uh, that meeting. Uh, but Chris and I pretty much agreed on uh, two major things. One is that uh, the next plan generated has to... Uh, move the brook so that it's uh, on the border with both town conservation land and the private land, not all on either one. And uh, the other issue uh, was uh, not uh, to uh, exclude uh, the homeowners on the other side. Uh, you know, they want some of this project and we want some of this project and then the other thing that we brought up at the public hearing previously was the uh, testing of the sediments uh, and uh, we agreed that the sediments should be tested in the original locations that showed us bad things and at the original depth so that uh, we're comparing apples to apples and uh we can make sure that we're doing the right thing there so those were the major uh things that uh i brought up with chris uh, and he agreed that that was the uh, way we should be going so as i say i tried i couldn't get a strong connection as was planned okay thank you al uh, Paul, would you like to continue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the main reason why I wanted to meet with the commission tonight was to discuss the um, creation of the environmental planner position. Um, we have been in the process of uh, restructuring the town's land use departments for the last two years. Back in um, July of 2018, Tony Mazuko, general manager, asked um, me to take over super supervising um, the conservation agent, Al Getz. And uh, the following year in July of 19, uh, our budgets from the, the planning board, the conservation commission, 
and the Board of Appeals were all brought together under one um, community development budget. The, what we're here to talk about tonight is the next phase in that process. In the FDR 21 budget, which will be um, approved at town meeting, it includes a new full-time position for an environmental planner slash conservation agent. Um, this is, is the, the next step in the consolidation of these departments. As you know, I've, I've, um, I've been doing this kind of work for many years and I've, and I've worked for uh, several communities and in all the towns that I've worked for, I work closely with the conservation agent. Norwood is the only town I've ever worked in over the last 34 years that had a part-time conservation agent. When I first started my career in the town of Duxbury back in um, 1987, Duxbury, a small town of 6,000, created a full-time conservation agent position. And I worked closely with, with, um, with Joe Grady in that position for year, many years. The other towns that I worked in um, all had full-time agents and they had um, full-time administrative staff. So for years, I knew that Norwood wasn't staffed properly, that we didn't have the same um, number of people um, putting in the same number of hours working on protecting the environment and on conservation issues as most other communities. We were able to confirm this. Um, the Human Resources Department did a, uh, a community study of 14 different towns. And these were comparable communities that Norwood often looks to when it does these types of salary surveys or staffing surveys. And um, what the data showed was that uh, the town of Norwood came in last. Out of 14 communities, we had the least amount of um, conservation professional staff and the least amount of administrative tap, staff time provided to the Conservation Commission. And so that just kind of confirmed what I already knew, but it was helpful to have that data to support the decisions that were going to be made moving forward. Um, coming in last is not where I think the, the, the leaders of the town of Norwood want to be in, in any department. And it's certainly not where I want to be in a department that I'm involved with managing. It's unacceptable. And the time is now to move forward and to try to begin to correct that, to try to provide the commission and a little bit of additional staff time for the planning department um, to work on environmental issues. Last year, Ramonda told me that she was um, interested in, in giving up her position with the Conservation Commission. As most of you know, Ramonda works part-time for the commission and part-time for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I knew that it would be very difficult to try to find someone to, to uh, um, for an eight hour, 10 hour a week position. And um, to, it would be difficult to find someone with Ramonda's experience, understanding what conservation does um, and to try to find someone to fill her shoes. And at that time, I realized that we needed to take, um, take some action. If Ramonda were to, to leave her post now, um, we'd really all be in a, in a tough place trying to um, fill that seat and to move forward with um, running the business of the Conservation Commission. And so it really was a few different factors that came together, which brought us to the point where um, Tony made the decision that, that now is the time to create this position and to move forward. We've provided in the FY21 budget sufficient funds for Ramonda and Al to stay on beyond the July 1st um, beginning of, of the budget year and um, to actually stay on um, for, for four months or so to be able to train this new person. It'll take us a while to find the right person um, to fill the position, but once we do, we want to have Ramonda and Al train this person and be able to provide some of that institutional knowledge and, and um, local operation knowledge to that person for a smooth transition. And so as I started off saying, it's been a slow process and um, it's going to continue to be a slow and deliberate process to make sure that we do this the right way. Um, the environmental planner will be doing um, essentially the administrative work that Ramonda does, 
and doing um, the professional conservation work that Al does. And um, what is now um, two part-time positions that does not equal a full-time position will be funded by um, a, a full-time position. Oftentimes, over the last few years, we would have people stop by the office to call looking for Al after 11 in the morning when, when he's gone. And we have to tell people that uh, um, they'll have to come back the next day or, or call later. And, and it's really not for a town like Norwood, that's not acceptable. It'd be different we were if somewhere out in Western Mass with a population of, of 3,000 people, part-time positions for these kind of things are normal. <laughs> but not in the suburbs and not in the greater Boston area. And, and we are looking to, um, to rectify this problem. Um, this person will provide all of the same staff support to the commission that Alan Armanda do now. And there will be some overlap working on um, environmental planner type projects. And they give you an example of some of the work that, that the environmental planner will be working on beyond um, assisting the commission with its business is things like what we had just started off the meeting discussing, the Mill Pond Dam removal. Um, it'll be good to have a full-time staff person um, involved with that project from beginning to end and making sure that it's done right and, and we're following all the procedures and the approved plans. We also talked about the purchase of the St. Lot earlier this evening and um, there's a lot of work to be done to um, hire a landscape architect to design a riverfront park and a, and a riverfront trail. And that's an example of another project that an environmental planner can handle. I'll be able to hand these things off to this person and, and work with them to oversee their work, but they'll do the majority of, of the work on these things. Management of conservation land, working on um, developing new trails with the trails committee, conservation outreach and education, and um, working on future community preservation open space projects um, are all things that will be focused on by this new position. And um, we're confident that it will be successful. I'd be glad to answer any questions from any of the commissioners about this. All right, does anyone have any questions? Go ahead, Peter. Uh, I was just wondering, Paul, has this been advertised yet or did I miss that brought up? No, uh, the position needs to be a fu uh, funded through uh, next year's budget. And so there this will be uh, part of the budget for town meeting members to vote, vote on in, in June. As a follow up on that, Paul, um, do you think the four months will be sufficient to hire someone and get them in from the budget and then train them? We'll we'll do our best. And um, this is a lot better than the way things usually work. Usually somebody leaves a position and uh, <laughs> on board and they spend the first six months going through files. So um, we're hopeful that Al will hang in for um, through the fall and do some training and uh, we know Ramonda's not going anywhere because she's working for the Board of Appeals uh, in our office, and, and uh, we're, we're glad that she'll be available as well. Thank you. Molly Keene, um, HR Director, is here on this subject, and Tony Mazzucco has also joined us if you have any questions for them. I saw that Joe DiMaria had indicated he'd like to speak. Go ahead, Joe. Hi, I'm Joe DiMaria. I should like to uh, blow the horn of the Conservation Commission uh, with 40 some odd years of experience here. In probably over 400 filings, there has never been a case where the state has overturned the Norwood Conservation Commission's decision. My recollection, there are only two cases that were appealed and in those cases they were made the results were made stricter than the Norwood Conservation Commission's reports or decisions. So it's it's a very difficult kind of thing to improve upon. It's an amazing kind of reputation. And the other thing that I'd like to mention is that 
once the Conservation Commission makes a decision, the applicant has every right to go and appeal it. In the 40 years that I've been on the commission, not one applicant has felt that they were so badly mistreated that they had to recall and go to the state. And I think that's something for each of the members of this commission to have knowledge of and be proud of. Thank you, that's it. Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that, Joe, thank you. Go ahead, Paul. That, that's a fantastic track record. And, and I don't think there's a lot of conservation commissions that could say that. Um, um, but in, in addition to the commission doing great work over the years, I think we need to recognize Al for keeping the, the, the commission in the lanes and writing the decisions in a way that um, uh, they, they really couldn't be appealed successfully by uh, an abutter or uh, an applicant. And I totally agree with that. And I'm very hopeful that with that transitional period, we'll see some of that knowledge pass, passed right along. Um, I see Peter's indicated he'd like to speak. I just wanted to uh, emphasize that Al has been a godsend. He has been there for us every step of the way and has helped us. And his expertise has been just wonderful. So I just, that's why I was curious about him being available to train. So. Do you have anybody else that has a comment on that? Getting some background sound from caller three. I would like to speak. This is Al Getz. Go ahead, I'd love to hear from you. Well, one of the uh, comments that I would make is uh, Paul says I only work 15 hours a week. Well, he doesn't count the, the hours that I uh, put in after I leave the office at 11 o'clock. Uh, and the uh, like for the uh, uh, gas station, the BJ's gas station, I was there uh, while they installed the tanks until one after, uh, well, afternoon time. I don't think I left there until two o'clock. So uh, he doesn't count all that as part of the, the job, evidently. So uh, these uh, these numbers that he's put out, uh, it sounds good, but uh, uh, I think that uh, has to be looked at a little bit. But uh, I'm not disagreeing with the other things Paul says that uh, we uh, could have more uh, help and we could have uh, somebody that does uh, grant work and development of properties and things like that. But that isn't what the mandate was when I was hired. So I didn't do that. I took on my own the business of putting uh, some projects on the open space master plan for 20 years to get the uh, uh, property on University Avenue and the uh, church property on Nickel Street uh, become conservation property. Uh, those things took 20 years uh, for a town meeting to agree to deal with it. And the only way we got the University Ave property was the Army Corps and the EPA required the electric company to preserve some land in uh, return for their being granted uh, certain rights on the high tension line. So uh, th those are things that I did on my own. That wasn't part of the mandate when I was hired. So uh, Steve Costello and I uh, generated that list and the St. Street's lot was on our list uh, for many years also. So uh, yes, we did some things, but that wasn't part of the mandate for the Conservation Commission at that time. Uh, I know things have changed, and I think that it's a good thing that uh, uh, is recognized in the town hall at this point and by the selectmen and the townspeople that they need to protect more open space. And we have a couple of uh, properties that uh, we should be looking at. Uh, I know it's difficult to spend money, but uh, 
uh, we may need to do that. And that wasn't my job. Uh, uh, I regret that I couldn't have done more, but that's okay. Uh, I'll go on to the next uh, thing when the next agenda comes up. Good night. Well, thank you for that, Al. Um, I would say that surely, from my perspective, in the short time I've been on the board here, uh, I, I think that uh, your contributions are immeasurable. So uh, I appreciate your positivity and the um, you know forward-thinking outlook that you're you're providing us here tonight. I think I saw Cheryl uh, indicate that she'd like to speak. Go ahead, Cheryl. Yeah, um, Al does just to support Al. Al does do a lot of things that a lot of people don't even see because I've walked lots in the afternoon with him or have met him early in the morning before he even hits the office. So he does do a lot more than those 15 hours. Also, I have a couple of questions on the, um, the memorandum. It says that there was staffing survey of 24 communities and that a copy of the survey is attached. There is no copy of the survey. And I'd like to be honest, I'd like to see it. And I'd like to know if we have a say in this job description because there's things in it that are like saying that um, the new person would do um, the thing for notifying uh, butters, but the applicant notifies the butters. They get the list from a Ramonda after um, they do all the whatever, the lots and that, but that's the applicants responsibility and there's just a couple more things on it that personally i think it needs to be just a little bit and then my other question is do you plan on using this environmental planner person for the planning board yes the uh the position will be doing some work for for the planning department um and those are areas that that really kind of overlap with conservation work um but i anticipate that the majority of the time is going to be spent doing um work for the conservation commission um they'll be doing project related work things like community preservation projects um under supervision and and i don't know whether you want conservation or planning it's it's environmental protection work and and it will follow uh some overlap between the two positions. We'd be glad to provide you with the survey. I did give it a reminder with the intent that it would be provided to the commission um, and we'll get that out tomorrow morning. Can I follow up? Hey, go right ahead, Cheryl. Um, if, you, if you say that we're understaffed and that um, it needs to be a full-time person, well, if this person's gonna take over Ramonda's part and then also take over Al's position and go full time. When are they going to have time to do anything for planning or anything? It's almost like you're setting them up for a failure then. Unless I'm just misreading this memorandum and the job description. We're uh, we're hopeful that there'll be time to do um to do a variety of different work um beyond just uh doing notice of intents and and uh conservation related business. Um, the things that will be done, we'll say on the side are project related. And so um, the way I work with the uh, the planning board is, is we do our applications first, the special permits and the subdivisions and it as time allows, we do other projects um, and, and, and as time allows. And so, um, you know, at this point, this is what the town can do. The town does not have the, the money available to hire me a new planner. Um, and, and this is one step forward. I, I don't want to say that this is the final step in the reorganization of the community development department. I'm, I'm hopeful that Tony would be able to provide additional staff moving forward, but I certainly see this as a step forward um, from where we are now. Well, thank you for that, Paul. Does anyone else have any questions or comments? Uh, Molly, go ahead. 
Hi, so Cheryl had just made the comment that um, she has some input on the position description. And if you want to email me any of those suggestions that you have, I would be happy to bring them uh, in front of the personnel board for approval. Go ahead, Cheryl. Is it possible that before all this happens that um, it, this virtual stuff is just, it's a pain and I just think it's kind of weird to do it. And I'm, a, I'm hopeful that the way things are going, we'll be back to sort of meeting in June or July, but I would like it that um, the conservation board would be able to like, be able to discuss and, and have some input since the agent does work for um, the board in that, even though administratively they do answer to you, Paul, just so we could end up having the right fit and make everything as smooth as possible and have a good flow to it. Uh, Molly, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, uh, if I'm understanding you correctly, you, are you saying you want the ComCom to have a, a voice in the hiring process? Cheryl, you can respond. Yeah. I, I think we should know who it's going to be, not necessarily have a say in it, but I know the conservation when Al was um, hired, they they had a say in it. I just want it so it's a good good fit. No, absolutely. Yeah. what conservation does that's all no, because absolutely. we'd have we we need to be able to work with the person and just to have you want people to mesh together you want it you want it in easy ebb and flow and things like that so that's all not necessarily not to the extent you're saying no, I, I, just some of the stuff like we don't delineate wetlands. That it's a neutral party because if we de delineate it, not as we as a board member, but our agent doesn't do the delineating. A wetland scientist delineates. The agent goes out, verifies the delineation, and if he sees something wrong, he lets us know. And we normally have a peer review. We've been very successful with peer reviews because then they end up being in favor normally of the town, like 99.9% .9 of the, the town. You wouldn't want the, the planner or an agent to say per se, go out and do the delineating because that, that's like a bag of worms for um, a lawsuit in that. And I could be misreading the wording. I'm not saying I'm reading this position correctly and or it's not tweaked all the way and you guys had put something together. But I noticed the dates of this is back in like January when all this started. So it's just a couple things that, not saying it's a bad thing, but it like polishing yeah. per se. But that's all. I'm welcome to any of the input, and I think having a, a member of the CONCOM on the hiring panel, on the recruitment panel for this position is completely appropriate. Very good. Uh, well, can I follow real quick? Go ahead, Cheryl. If we do that, can we have like two in the read? That way, it's just not one voice, it would be more. It'd be basically half the board then. If two people do it, would that be okay? We have to just take a look at it. Mostly we don't like okay. to really overwhelm applicants with a huge panel of people in no. front of them. Does it scare well, them not, off? I'm happy yeah. to discuss who could be on the panel. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Thank you. I really do appreciate that, Molly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I saw that you uh, had indicated you may like to speak, Mr. Mizuka. Yes, thank you, Steve. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just to, two quick points. Um, to Cheryl's point, any input on the job description, by all means, send it in to Molly. And we generally hire by committee or hire by panel anyway. It comes to a group consensus. So somebody from the CONSCOM, and depending on who's on the panel, it could even be two members. As long as we're at five members for the CONSCOM, we don't hit three. We can definitely do two. It would probably it's, We always have somebody from HR in all of our interviews. 
um, monitoring the process. And then the initial round would be, um, maybe we go through two rounds, but it can be two members of the CONSCOM and then it will be Paul. And then whether he wants Patrick or Amanda in there, uh, we can certainly accommodate that. I mean, the person does work closely enough with you that you folks should be able to find somebody that works closely with you. And uh, just one other point um, to wrap up and then I've got to run and grab dinner out of the oven. Uh, in, in terms of where we're going down the road, we've been slowly making changes to try to unleash the potential of our planning department. Uh, we're behind on grants. I mean, Patrick and Paul are able to bring in their salaries and then some every year in grants. There's a lot of grants out there specifically related to parkland acquisition and uh, land improvement that we're not able to go out at globally. Uh, we'd at some point like to start up a CDBG program again. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars we could get every year for housing rehab and for other projects that we're not able to grab because we don't have the capacity to grab. Um, those are things we'd like to do. So as we add capacity to the staff, we now have time to start going after those things. We're woefully behind in GIS, uh, geographic information systems and our mapping systems. It's a hope that with more staff capacity, we can use what we have more. And that will be the next position we'd like to add to the planning and economic development mix as a GIS person. It, it's taken two and a half years to get a part-time position to full-time. So when that's gonna happen, um, hopefully before I retire in 33 years, but I'm hoping within a year or two, there's a retirement or a reallocation somewhere. And then next goal will be, it'll be a town-wide position, but a GIS position. And then we're just looking at some point, I'd love to do something specific to economic and workforce development. It's just, it comes into competition with resources everywhere you go. But for a dense town of 30,000 residents with a large commercial base and a significant industrial base, where we've always been under-resourced in planning, we're sort of the, um, and when I say planning, we mean all of our land use functions. If you think about it, Paul and Patrick plus Ramonda and Al, there's staff support provided to the Conservation Commission, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, the CPC Committee, as well as the Economic Development Committee. So planning and economic development is the avenue for us to take care of a lot of different projects in town and make sure we're making the right decisions for the future. Um, we're starting to acquire open space. There's one or two parcels out there that once we can get an agreement for them to sell it to us, we're going to want to go forward with that. So the goal is that 10 years from now, we have more open space that we have. So the role is going to grow and be defined as it comes along, but we're trying to overall increase the capacity we have for all of our land use planning functions to do more and to do better for the town. Outstanding. Thanks so much for that, Mr. Mizuko. Uh, Cheryl, I see you excitedly indicating you would like to speak. Go ahead. Tony, before you bug her out there, can I make a suggestion on something? And it might be in left field or something. But CPC has money in it in an administrative pot. Patrick does an awful lot of like secretarial admin stuff for CPC between the minutes and putting agendas together and everything else. And it would almost seem like between the planning department and CPC in that they need a secretary. And I know back in 2017, it was said, no secretary will give you Patrick and everything. But at the time there wasn't CPC. And, and I know Patrick puts in a lot of time and he does an awful lot of stuff and he goes to a lot of these meetings. And I think his knowledge could be better used towards the writing of the grants and doing other stuff and just have somebody do secretarial work, type up stuff, set the agendas, do the, the posting, the filing, all that. All that day-to-day -day stuff that kind of glues a department together, but doesn't do the higher up part of the part department because that's something that could be split with a budget of planning and the CPC since the CPC does have funds. And if the CPC is going to keep moving forward with all these projects, that that secretary part, they could be monitoring the, the, the projects and, and truly allow Patrick to do what he was actually hired to do because Patrick is an asset to this town and he steps up a lot to the plate. Sorry, Patrick, don't mean to embarrass you, but I've noticed a lot of stuff that you do and you're going to be an asset to some department head in some town someday. So I, I think 
for us to benefit from Patrick, I really think there needs to be a secretary in there. And I'd be more than happy to stand up in at town meeting and, you know, plug away at it because I think they do need a secretary. I really do. I agree 110 percent. Paul and I talked about that uh, quite a bit that Patrick is fantastic. We actually would never give him a good reference because we don't want him to go anywhere. So if anyone calls about him, we say he's he, he's really just you don't want him because we're we're intent to not lose him because Patrick is fantastic. Um, Paul and I have talked about different ways to use that money to provide some of that administrative support so Patrick can focus on other things. And what we're looking at in the fall, we, we'd started talking about it. And then of course, uh, COVID came up is we might be able to get somebody in, you know, six hours a week, eight hours a week, you might be able to get like a retired project manager who can do the admin work. And then following up with some of the projects ends up becoming sort of a burden on different departments as it's all right, well, we've gone through the project development phase, and then we've gone through the approval phase. And then it's, you know, if it's a small enough project, we can manage it. And you just need somebody to keep track with where it's going. And it all gets dumped on the, the planning department to do. So I agree 110%. We've got to do something, come up with some, maybe it's an eight hour week position, 10 hour week position to facilitate all that work for the CPC going forward. And some of it is the minutes in the agenda, but that way, Paul and Patrick and Ramonda and the environmental planner, they can work on the project development. They can work on the information, getting projects to fruition, let somebody handle the admin work. And then Anyone who's dealt with public procurement, uh, and Cheryl, I know you do a lot of construction. If you've ever dealt with a public project, mm -hmm. the paperwork is just, I mean, building a gazebo is like 16 cases worth of paperwork that you need to go through um, just to do a simple, simple project. So following up on these becomes a, a, a nightmare in some cases. So I, I agree completely. I think once we're, we're normalized over the summer, that's going to be the next conversation is that's another good piece to adding to all these important land use boards is how do we get the CPC that support? So Pat can focus on some of the other stuff that he, he's been very talented with. I mean, he's doing CPC, he's doing planning board, he's doing a lot of our economic development work, he's doing a lot of our downtown work. I just feel like we stretched him a little thin, to, to be honest. And doing construction, it's a lot of paperwork, it's a lot of tracking, and you need to know exactly where all that money is and who's doing what and whatnot. And, and I think, personally, I think Patrick is going to get burned out at some point. So not to move away from conservation, guys, and I apologize. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. I'll shut my mic off. Well, thank you, Shell. It's appreciated. And uh, we very much appreciate Mr. Mazuka being here tonight to speak to us. Um, it sounds like he may be taking his leave. Does anyone else have any questions, comments, or responses to Mr. Mazuka's statements? All right, um, Paul, would you like to uh, continue speaking? Uh, I think I actually had seen Chris Capizio indicate quite some time ago that she may have had something to say. Chris, do you uh, have something for Paul? Yeah, no, I mean, I just, I concurred with Cheryl. I, I did think it was a good idea to um, not, maybe not necessarily have someone on the panel, but simply to pass by the finalists to um, the committee to take a look at. I think, you know, even if you just sort of pre-screen and then pass the finalist resumes by us for the quick um, sort of uh, insight as to, you know, why you think their candidacy is strong. I mean, I think that that would be adequate, but I do want to support what Cheryl um, brought up because I think it was valuable and, and not to backtrack too much because we've already kind of passed this point in the conversation, but um, the survey, uh, it looks like it addressed staffing hours, um, time spent on planning work and money spent by the town. But I was curious whether the updates to the job description also were included in a survey of the uh, 14 towns as well. So did we also evaluate the job descriptions for, the, for a similar position in these towns? And then, you know, broke up a little bit towards the end there for me, um, but I think I caught the majority of that. Uh, does Paul or Mark care to respond to the line of question about the survey and the content thereof? Go ahead, Molly. 
I was just to say I, you cut out quite a bit there. I'm I'm happy to provide the survey. Was the question on how how the data was collected? No, I'm sorry. I didn't know that I got cut out. My question was with regards to the um, changes that were made to the actual job description. I noticed that the survey evaluated several different areas. It doesn't appear that the job description for similar titles were incorporated in that analysis. Chris, I'm, not I'm sure wondering the if the voice. updates to the current job description is based on um, your review of several different towns and how they've outlined the position. And I, I think I got I got the end part of what you were saying. Um, yes, yeah, so we we took the job descriptions for conservation agents or inventor environmental planners or some positions had environmental planners slash conservation agents. And we took what we considered to be the best of all of those different, I think there were, I think 14 or so different job descriptions. And we compiled what we thought were the best practices in a way that best supported Norwood, because obviously Norwood is a unique community. So we took it through that lens of how could we um, have both of those, you know, conservation focused, but including some environmental planning um, essential functions. Um, while still trying to keep it as close to gear to Norwood um, as possible. And like I said to Cheryl, if anybody on the commission has any changes that they want to make, I'm sure the personnel board would be receptive to reviewing the description again before we fill the position. Awesome, thank you for that, Molly. Um, does anyone else have any questions or comments before we pass it back to Paul to perhaps uh, wrap up uh, his thoughts about the environmental planning position? All right, Paul, go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Well, that's that's really all I wanted to cover with the commission tonight. Um, if there's more discussion or questions on this for me, I'm probably going to take my leave and excuse myself. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for being here tonight, Paul. Really appreciate the update, and it's very nice to uh, see and hear from you with all of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have a good evening. Likewise. Thanks, everyone. Can I get go to meeting a moment to catch up? There we go. All right, I'm going to move on the agenda. Uh, next up, we have uh, notice of intent TEC Inc. representing Mark Ryan, Town of Norwood Engineering Department. EEP file number 251-0514, Norwood number N2020-02, project location is Dean Street over Norwood, Massachusetts. Do we have a representative present? Hey everyone, can, can you hear me? It's, uh, I can hear you clearly. Perfect, yeah, I, um, it's, it's split up, so I got, I got the video on one, and then I believe I'm also caller too, so... Um, I apologize for the confusion there, but anyways, my name is uh, David Nader. I'm from TEC. I believe uh, Bob Nicoli is also uh, on the line with us as well. Uh, he's he'll answer any uh, structural questions. But um, yeah, so we're we're here representing the town of Norwood Engineering Department, um, presenting on the Dean Street Bridge Emergency um, Culvert Repair Project. Um, and so I'll just I'll just get right into it. So the existing culvert um, was built in 1958. Uh, consists of a corrugated steel archway on concrete footings, and I believe it was February 22nd, 2019. Steel arch uh, failed, resulting in sinkholes um, along Dean Street. Um, the being delineated um, later on in June, July of 2019 by Rimmer. Uh, the resource areas include Meadow Brook, which is running under Dean Street. Um, the associated banks with that uh, the thin strip of BBW that's on either side of those banks, and then uh, land subject to flooding. Um, what we're proposing is basically a replacement like kind um, with the steel archway. Uh, talking, talking with Al, it'll be uh, hot, hot dip galvanized. Um, 
that was that was a, uh, a side a side conversation that him and I had. Um, but we're going to be reusing the concrete footings um, as they're still structurally sound. Um, so essentially, it's going to be a replacement like kind, like I said. The steel arch is going to be uh, existing steel arch is going to be removed, replacing a um, new steel arch on top of that the concrete footings that are currently in place. Um, we're also proposing uh, riprap to uh, basically between the footings to prevent scour. Uh, we had actually Dubois and King uh, do a hydrologic analysis uh, that determined that existing conditions are all right with um, as far as scour goes, the footings are good. However, with 50 and 100 year storms and as storms get larger, the scour depth will um, continue to increase and basically undermine the footings. So replacing from six to ten inches of uh, D50 uh, riprap, um, uh, basically keep, keeping the same infrared elevation, or replacing the substrate with riprap um, would prevent that. Um, I think I've gone through what I wanted to go through. I really just want to open up to uh, conversation and questions that, that you all might have. All right. Uh... Anyone with questions or comments could just indicate, Cheryl, I see your apologies. These got really small when you shared. Go right ahead. All right. Sorry, I had to. I just have one question. I know you guys are engineers, and I know you've done all the calculations and everything, and I've read the, um, the, the pamphlet, and I'm assuming you guys are going with option one since you put that one first. But... Um, because this had failed and that part of Dean Street, any part of Dean Street, basically, it's heavily traveled with a lot of um, trucks, like heavy, heavy trucks. So will this be able, just for people at home and my own curiosity, <clears throat> we'll be able to support that amount of traffic of those heavy like dump trucks, the asphalt trucks, the trash trucks and all the other tractor trailers that go up that way to get up onto Neponset and then to freeway? Absolutely. Um, I, we're, like, like I said, we're replacing in like kind and um, every, everything that the bridge was able to handle before, beforehand, well, it'll be able to handle again. Uh, what ended up happening was just after years and years of, um, of deteriorating, uh, the, the metal just ended up giving out which and that's why it ended up failing. Um, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't that the design was um, was incorrect. I can take that to a little oh, bit yeah. further. Yeah. Um, since that culvert was, this is Bob Nikolai, also from TEC, the structural engineer. Uh, just uh, the design loads that Ashto uses have increased over the years, so this new structure will be able to handle more loads than the original structure was designed for. However, Dave, David is correct. It was more of a deterioration issue over time where that culvert put in was either uncoated or lightly coated. So over time it experienced corrosion and section loss, which led to the failure. Here we'll have hot dip galvanized uh, corrugated metal pipe, which will stand up much better to the elements. I believe Cheryl has another question. I do. I just have a follow up. Do you guys have like a time frame um, about how long this will take? Because since the road has basically been shut down on that side, a lot of people in Norwood have asked, when is it going to get fixed and what happened and so on and so forth. So I think um, the, the people in town would like to know, give or take. I know you can't nail it down because you have to wait. So we get past the mm -hmm. rain and all that, but approximate time frame, how long it would take to do this uh, work? We think about two to three months. Again, I can't give okay. you a direct time frame until the contractor bids it. Uh, there is a lighting project that begins in September, I want to say. And so this project needs to be substantially complete by that point. Okay. So. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. That's as best as I can give you with COVID. You know, a lot of things are day to day. Yeah. No, but I appreciate that's the best that. I can give you. More for the people at home, anyways. But thank you. 
Yeah, thank you for that, mm -hmm. Cheryl. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have any other questions or comments? This is Al Getz. Yeah, please, Al. I'd like to speak. Yeah, please, Al. I'm sorry, I still can't see your video, so I'm having trouble um, knowing when when to call on you. But yes, please, Al, I would love to hear from you. Before the engineers completed their task, I saw the pictures of the project. And uh, when I looked at the pictures uh, in our discussions with the engineers, my conclusion was that the galvanized coating didn't stand up uh, to the abrasion and the acid rain and things like that so that the uh, corrosion uh, ate away at the galvanized coating pretty quickly, uh, that archway should have stood up much longer. So if they, uh, when they install the new galvanized sections, the lower couple of feet are coated just like we coat the sewer pipes uh, with an asphalt coating, we should do the same thing to that galvanized metal and that will make the uh, uh, archway last a lot longer. Uh, this project, the galvanized archway is, and the cover under the street, that part of the project is pretty much exempt from conservation because we're not disturbing the, uh, the footings on either side. Where the jurisdiction comes into play is the uh, disturbance on the outside uh, at the approaches uh, to this uh, culvert and the riprap. And I think that they have uh, designed it properly uh, to prevent uh, scouring and erosion into the brook. And I think it'll be uh, a better situation than it has been for some time. So that's, that's where I uh, came to conclusions when I looked at the plans originally and I made that recommendation to Mark Ryan uh, at a meeting. Uh, and actually, I think it was the meeting where it was uh, uh, when Tony uh, had come down with this uh, virus thing. And uh, th that's where I made the recommendation to Mark Ryan on that day. But uh, I think that that would uh, work uh, to uh, give a little more longevity to the project. That's all I need to say on this project. Okay. Uh, we can certainly look into that asphalt coating. Uh, the galvanizing that was done when this uh, bridge was installed is, is not the same as the galvanizing we're doing now. So the newer, the more technologically advanced galvanizing process should hold up a little bit better than the previous iteration, but I can definitely look into that asphalt coating. I've been a metal worker for a long time, uh, 35 years of that, and I know about galvanized products. And uh, okay. the, the hot dip galvanized is an improvement over the electronic method, uh, electrolysis method, but the uh, hot dip galvanized erodes away uh, especially with the chemicals that we have in the water today from acid rain. Uh, so uh, the coating on the uh, lower couple of feet of uh, this archway would be uh, an improvement. Okay. That's great info. Thank you for that, Al. Um, yeah. Do we have any further questions or comments from the commission? Cheryl, go right ahead. Oh, I was going to make a motion to close the hearing, follow up with a motion to accept um, this notice of intent with the set of plans. We started about what I wanted to talk about. You can hear that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Second. This is Peter. Go ahead, Peter. Second. All right, so I'm going to go uh, through each member of the commission and just ask you to verbally indicate your your name and your vote. Okay. Uh, thank you, Maria. Wait, Steve, Steve, oh, Steve, Steve I think you have something from the public. There's someone from the public? I think there might be somebody from the public. 
All right, if we have someone uh, from the public that would like to uh, comment on the project that's being discussed right now, if you could just identify yourself, please, for the record. Cheryl? Okay. Steve, you need to, because I did it like a, a double on it, you have to roll call the first part of the motion of closing it and then roll call the second part to accept it. Second, both of them together. Did I make sense? Yep, understood. So uh, the first roll call, we're going to be uh, we're going to do this separately. So could you just repeat the first uh, motion, Cheryl? For I will. I make a motion. We close the hearing. Seconded. Thank you, Peter. All right, I'll go right through the list now. We'll just have you uh, state your name and your vote. Joe DiMaria. Joe DiMaria. I agree. Cheryl Doyle. Yes. Peter Bamberg. Peter Bamberg, yes. John Gear. Yes. John Gear, yes. And Chris Capizia. Uh, Chris, you're muted right now. Oh, I said yes, but I think that there's a lag. Gotcha that time. Thanks so much. All right, and uh, show your second motion again, please. My second motion is to accept the notice of intent, of intent DEP file number 251-0514 and 2020-02. And second. of record. Sorry, Peter, plan of record as is. Seconded. Thank you, Peter. I'll once again go through the roll call. Just have to state in your vote. Uh, Joe DiMaria. Joe DiMaria, yes. Cheryl Doyle. Cheryl Doyle, yes. John Gear. John Gear, yes. Peter Bamber. Peter Bamber, yes. Chris Capizia. And Chris Pizio, yes. Excellent, thank you. Cheryl, go ahead. I lost your video, Cheryl. Are you indicating you wanted to speak? Yeah, I, sorry, I hit the wrong button. No problem. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to have Al write the orders of conditions. My only question is, Ramonda, how do we sign them? I will bring it around to you all and have you individually sign it. So I just have to work off times with each one of you. Okay. All right. You well, good, you. Al? Oh, next. Are you good on this, Al? All right, I'm going to keep the agenda moving up next. We have a request for extension order of conditions. It's like town order only Conoco engineers and scientists representing Boston gas company town order number N2019-03 project location is Moore street and pleasant street, Norwood, Massachusetts. Do I have a president that could identify themselves, please. They're not attending tonight. Al, are you there? I'm here. I would like to speak to that. Uh, I think it's to the. I think it's to the town's benefit to approve the extension, because we really want to have that mess that's in the street and crossing the river there. Uh, 
I think you've muted yourself now. You cut out right after the mess uh, in the okay. street. Okay, I got it back. Uh, the uh, proposal corrects some weaknesses in that area, which could be a liability later. And I think that uh, by getting the uh, proper crossing over the river, uh, no exposed pipe, and uh, the double pipes, uh, old pipes in the road fixed uh, uh, is a benefit to us and removes some uh, safety issues. So I think it's uh, to our benefit to extend this uh, order. Cheryl, go ahead. I know I'm irritating you guys tonight, but Not at all. Hey, Not at so all. the WPA order, it's valid until May 8th, 2022. Should we match that one instead of keep having them come back every year? Because we know they're going to have a delay start. Yes, just make that motion. Make that motion. Make okay, motion. I make a motion that we extend the um, the town order to May 8th, 2022 to match the WPA order, file 251-0505. Second. All right, once again, I'll go through the roll call to state your name and your vote. Jody Maria. Jody Maria, aye. Cheryl yes. Doyle. Cheryl Doyle, yes. John Gear. John Gear, yes. Peter Bamber. Peter Bamber, yes. And Chris Capizio. All right. Um, yeah. oh, just got it. There it was. Yep. Okay. Um, so is that uh, that's going to be similar? We have to sign that, and it'll be done at the same time as the notice of intent, or okay. Uh, let's keep the agenda moving then. Uh, next up, we have Norwood Sportsman's Fishing Derby 2020. Uh, Al, do you want to take this? That, that's uh, a project that uh, we've been approving and giving them $100 a year for as far back as I can remember. And I would make the suggestion that uh, we increase the number of uh, dollars. Uh, uh, I think $100 doesn't buy too many fish. So uh, I think it would be good for the commission uh, to increase the contribution uh, maybe to 150 or $200. So uh, that's my recommendation anyway. And do we have uh, any indication if the event is still scheduled to, to continue right now, to, to carry on? I haven't heard anything um, from them, so. Okay. Um, Cheryl, go right ahead. Um. If it's okay with the commission, I will make the motion that we increase it to Al. You said two hundred, right? Is that yes, I did to two hundred. But under the condition that um, if the derby doesn't go through, then um, the money doesn't go anywhere. Just in case this virus thing ends up going through the entire summer into fall. Does that make sense, guys? It does. That does make sense. Second. Go through the roll call. Uh, state your name and vote. Joe Di Maria. Joe Di Maria. Yes. Cheryl Doyle. Cheryl Doyle. Yes. John Gear. John Gear. Yes. Peter Bamber. Peter Bamber. Yes. Chris Capizia. All right. Um, all right. Great. Excellent. I think that was a great, uh, a great thought show. Uh, next up, we have MACC update. Um, Al, do you want to get us started? I, I don't have any, uh, anything to add there. 
I think the idea of this, uh, someone please correct me if I'm wrong, was that there was a desire, I think, presented by maybe Chris Capizio just to discuss uh, everyone's uh, attendance and experience at uh, MACC conference. Is that right, Chris? Could you confirm yeah. or deny? Yeah, and I think it's been too long now, so I, we can um, move on to the next agenda item. Sure. Well, if anyone has anything that they do want to say about um, that event, I would say that I very much enjoyed the opportunity to present with Chris. I very much appreciated the um, attendance of some of our peer commissioners. I thought that um, the conference as a whole was very enjoyable. There was a lot of energy and excitement. Uh, it almost feels like another lifetime at this point, but um, yeah, I just uh, say uh, I would say a big thanks to Chris for involving me in that presentation and to the, the folks that came out to support it. Um, yeah. All right, um, let's see up next on our agenda. We have our treasurer's report. Peter. Nothing for tonight. Thank you. All right. Uh, conservation agents report. Al Getz, we'd love to hear from more from you. Yeah, I have a couple of things. Uh, uh, last week, uh, a homeowner that lives uh, uh, on the land near the airport was complaining about a couple of trees. Uh, Amanda showed me pictures of the trees that were in question. And uh, I guess the question originally was, uh, would the town take them down? Uh, but it looked to me like the uh, trees were on their property and we're not usually in the business of taking down privately owned trees, but uh, uh, I, uh, with Reminder's help, uh, gave permission for the uh, homeowner to take down the trees. They uh, didn't look very healthy and uh, they were afraid they'd come down in the yard and be a menace to somebody. So uh, uh, the jurisdiction was that they were uh, in uh, an area that's uh, probably uh, wetland soils and wetland plants, but uh, uh, they were a hazard. So uh, I gave permission for that to be done. Uh, likewise, uh, I have signed uh, uh, the permission for the wood duck houses uh, at Guild Pond, Guild Pond when Eagle Project and uh, uh, the other Eagle project, uh, Joe Greeley is following up on the trail work uh, that uh, uh, another Eagle Scout is uh, planning to do. So uh, we're still following up on those things and that uh, is going forward. The uh, dam removal uh, project, uh, Chris Hirsch uh, called me this morning and I couldn't get into the uh, the phone meeting, uh, somehow I didn't have the right number or the number they gave me didn't work. However, uh, Chris and I discussed uh, the two issues that were remaining uh, when we had the public meeting. And then one was the location of the New Brook. Uh, and I want to make sure that that was on uh, on the property line and not all on their, uh, their property, which uh, wouldn't give us access. And the second thing was uh, the uh, uh, project, uh, well, it slipped my mind what the second issue was. Well, the uh, soil test, the polluted soils that caused the project to be uh, derailed when we proposed it, uh, and uh, Chris uh, agreed to have the uh, the new testing that was going to be necessary done at the original test sites and to the original depths, and uh, that's I think important. So we're comparing apples to apples and not uh, two separate uh, things, and uh, the. Uh, State has uh, hired a new engineer to do the next section of the plan uh, to go from 40% to 75% of the plan. I don't know why they couldn't have uh, kept the same engineer, but uh, it seems funny to 
to split the project up uh, into two separate uh, engineers. But uh, that's the way they work, I guess. But uh, uh, I think it's going forward anyway. And this certainly isn't going to be this summer. OK, that's all I've got for tonight. Uh, Cheryl, go ahead. OK, just real quick, I promise. Hey, Al. Al. I'm here. OK. I'm here. You know, you know across the way on the Dean Street, the, the culvert that failed, and there yep. was all this stuff, and you had contact Mark Ryan and had it all cleaned up? Yep. OK. Um, I'm not sure, but there might be a squatter there because there's a camper there, there's a canoe there, there's a bike there, there's like a fencing, um, stock with fencing all the way around the camper now. And so um, I don't know if you want to have Ramon to contact Mark Ryan or what, but yeah, somebody's well, moved in. That would be oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that the, the police yeah, that will be taken care of. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Who calls them? Well, I, I will be willing to call Mark Ryan tomorrow. Okay. Or I'll try to. All right. It's just getting really junky. And like I said, somebody made Yeah, I agree. And that's okay. on the, the sewer. That's on the sewer easement. Uh, sewer easement. Yeah. Responsibility, regardless of who owns it. Yeah. No, it is. It's right on the sewer easement. Again. All right. Thank you. No, oh, thank you for that, Cheryl. Um, and you said that was it, Al. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again for that. Um, next up, we have our CPC representatives report, Cheryl. Okay. Oh, this is so painful. Okay, so our pavilion still hasn't gone out the bed. Hmm. We, we've been trying. I brought it up at the CPC meeting last week that um, it's been over a year and we need it to go out the bed. So now it's the virus. So just buy me some time and we'll keep plugging away. It's a cheap little project. So I apologize, guys. I did bring it up to the meeting. I don't think you have uh, any blame in that, Cheryl. Um, you know, it's understandable. It would have been nice to have had it up considering the, the circumstances that we're going through now, because a lot of people could have got out of the house and just got a breath of fresh air to sit there. Oh, right. But on the other hand, we're getting a lot of compliments on El Aviso's property because a lot of people are using it. They notice there's the garden there. They know there's the picnic tables, the benches, the, the lower pond, the creek, all that stuff going through there. So people are noticing it. So that's the on the flip side. That's the good part. Yeah, right so, on. All right. OK. Um, next up, proposal of future agenda items. Hmm. All right. Well, before we have uh, that motion, I would just say thank you to everyone for uh, their patience, understanding, and willingness to participate like this. I know it's uh, strange times in a strange way, but the show must go on, and I, I would say that everyone did an excellent job. So um, thank you, and if someone wants to make a motion. I make a motion. Oh. Second. I'll go through roll call one more time. State your name mm -hmm. and whether you are in favor or not. Jody Maria. Aye. Yeah, I, Jody Maria. Cheryl Doyle. Yes, Cheryl Doyle. John Gear. John Gear, yes. Peter Bambi. Peter Bambi, yes. Chris Capizia. I'll say I too. All right. Thanks again, folks. Okay. Uh, it was, it was a real pleasure to see and hear from all of you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.